The lethal does mean no owner back on the Maokai. It's been so interesting because the drafts have been going so quick, honestly, on both sides. Yeah. Uh, it will mean Ruler likely to get Jinx here. Uh, has been on the Aphelios the last couple games around. Uh, and Jinx, you know, with that engaged, they're hovering. Oh, they're actually wow. just going to lock it in. Wow. So it is just going to be the Rakan. They're really highly prizing this engage. That is a lot of priority onto this Rakan, especially with Lulu not banned. And so now the Aphelios Lulu that has been a premier bottom lane here in, uh, at MSI will be able to be locked in if T1 won it. But it's interesting because it just feels like they're prioritizing denying this away from Carrier more than like the 2v2 for themselves. Uh, Rakan, not that strong of a laner, let's be honest. It's much more about the explosiveness in that 5v5. And they're again potentially just going to be going towards all of these threats, all of this backline dive to really focus on Gumiyushi, who had a hell of a time in the last game. I think they're just setting up for a Yasuo angle. <laughs> it's going to pick all that of the That will be hype. Game five. Yeah, that is, that is how you do it. But uh, all jokes aside, it is just a lot of what made JDG able to win these team fights in the previous game. They're just going to try and do it on the red side. And the Jinx, I think, is actually very important. Ruler is so good at any sort of champion that can execute on spacing. And his spacing with the biggest range in the game is uh, devastating for a lot of teams. But he's going to have to try and find a way to stay safe, because there ain't a lot of peel uh, with a Rakan who wants to be going forward. And you do see JDG also pivoting away, uh, or rather denying, the Tristana to T1. And even though Tristana itself wasn't really the focal point, I do think that JDG have shown that if T1 is effectively playing a one threat comp, they are able to out execute. They're able yeah. to out team fight. And I do think it'll be a little bit harder without the Annie. But you already have a lot of the tools with the Rakan and the Gragas to ensure that Guma isn't in the fight. So taking away power picks that allow Faker to also have a bigger impact when it comes to damage is really big. Absolutely. And, and I do like that they early picked this Gragas here. You know, potentially, we are expecting it to go 369, but potentially it could be mid lane as well, right? You know, it could be yeah. that uh, option for a flex here uh, towards night. But this is going to be really interesting. Are they going just full dive again? Are they going to commit heavily to that? Sejuani feels like it has been the option with all of these AD junglers getting banned out. Sejuani, of course, a lot of physical damage in the early stages. Has a knockup as well, which mm -hmm. uh, I think is very, very important. Fifth pick Yasuo coming yep. through. <laughs> That's what I'm looking for. But no, what we're actually looking for is LeBlanc versus Syndra. That's what everyone wants. Oh. That is what we want to see. Fake is LeBlanc versus Knight Syndra. That would be the ultimate matchup in the mid lane, and what a time to do it than in game number five. So I think just throw the drafts out. We just need to watch that yep. 1v1, and that's how we decide, decide the series, is that is going to be a Gwen locked in. A lot of magic damage available here for oh. T1, and that is once again the Nautilus. Now, not going to be heading into an Annie, so maybe that helps it. I mean, you can hear the crowd react. They are not happy about the Nautilus pick here. The yeah, T1 I was like, fans audibly oh my, disappointed. Is he actually going to do it? They're hovering. They're oh, hovering. No. They're trolling me. Then maybe they were listening. Oh, Silas is actually so good here. Yeah, I think Silas, Silas is, is a good matchup into the Nautilus. There's great ults to steal from the Nautilus as well as from the Maokai. Those are two of the really premier ones that you can take away. I love this pick. Also pairs really well with the Zedjuani. It's a double melee pairing. So there's lots of ganking options here now for Kanavi. I think it's a really intelligent grab. Not only that, but one of the biggest powers of the Maokai is his ultimate, right? Just having the ability yeah. to either deny your opponent's dive, which, to be frank, that will still be good against JDG, but even with zoning off objectives and trying to force mm -hmm. fights on your terms, it is really valuable. But if the opposing team also gets a Maokai ultimate, so much of that value is lost. As you mentioned, amazing matchup into the Nautilus as well. Nautilus doesn't have the damage to out-trade Silas if he can get multiple Kingslayer procs. And... I think for me, the breaking point is what is going to happen here with this Gwen. Because Zeus actually was able to get so much damage done in the game where he did play it, and it does solve the issue that T1 have been running into, which is not enough damage in team fights. Yeah, not enough threats for sure. Uh, but I do have a little bit of a, you know, a question about like how how is it going to go for him? Because it's of these ultimates that he can hijack, death yeah. charge, wild growth, as well as the nature's grasp, it could be very very scary. Here we are onto the rift for game number five. Which team will be going to the final of MSI 2023? That's what we're looking to find out here. Which team will have to fight through the lower bracket to get a rematch with their opposition? T1, they have the Maokai at the ready yet again. Has been so powerful, but this time, JDG brought one of their own. And, and either T1, you know, maintain their Guaranteed, because of course there's a lower bracket uh, win rate of getting to finals over the last years, or JDG get the highest guaranteed finish, right? Because if they make it to the finals, that's a guaranteed top two for them 
Something that the organization has not been able to do. It's been only uphill. Of course, yep. got the semis last world. And they have and a so prime many, opportunity now. And have so many times been favorites for so many international competitions as well. JDG have been lurking for so many years. This would be massive if they can get there. Isaias and 369 just uh, fighting one another for a moment. And the body slam going to come through to win that one out for 369. Message yeah. received. 369 very clearly wanted to get that ward down. Isaias is trying to defend on that push, but not quite able to do so. Uh, he's resolved secondary, so it'll be interesting to see if Isaias is actually second wind uh, to help deal with this matchup. He has started D-Shield. I'm just going to check on that. Yeah, so he is actually second win. So D Shield second win is going to help to deal with a lot of this poke. Uh, 369, as we saw, is going E start here, which can be really effective uh, in these early levels. Yep, Faker finding a decent little trade there on tonight, but nothing really to worry about at level one between these two. And on the bottom side of the map, you saw T1 standing on a ward. Thought that that was going to be potentially dangerous, but. They are going to step out and try and take some control here of this lane. And this is one of the major weaknesses of, of this 2v2 bot lane. You know, Ruler and Missing are not going to be able to contest against Lulu as well as the Aphelio. So they're just going to have to kind of seed control here in this 2v2. And we'll see you know, if T1 can use this as a major point of power because the Rakan is so much more about the 5v5s, about these skirmishes, than it is about the 2v2 laning prowess where I don't think they're going to be able to get much of anything done. Well, we've seen this before. Kanavi's setting up for a gank onto Faker. Ona, no interest in heading towards the river right now. So we'll see whether Faker can get out of this one or whether he's going to respect Kanavi's potential positioning. He has to wait for his Q cooldown, though. He queued over the wall there, and the cooldown is so long on these early levels on Sejuani. Yeah, so. especially now. Mm -hmm. Also, do note, uh, as we have seen, if the Nautilus in particular falls behind early on, makes it so much harder to play out. You are going to be one of the main forms of initiation, and now with him spotted, and Mavi might go in more aggressively here. He's invested so much time. If Faker just backs off and doesn't die here, Maokai is three camps ahead. Kanavi has waited like for 30, 40 seconds here on this bottom side and gotten literally nothing. They know because they have a ward on Raptors. T1 yeah. are saying, why are you not farming your Raptors? You must be looking for something. He did the three camp spot, but this ward from Faker sussed out the fact that he would be looking for a gank, completely denied it, and now Maokai is three camps ahead. Now they know T1 able to see that Kanavi was indeed just Wandering around the map, going to be taking his Raptors now, but that is going to be a level lead to come through. There is no Pryo, though, in top and mid, so Kanavi can still be fine or should be able to pick this up thanks to the help of his teammates. Yep, yeah, Faker actually trying to find a bit of a trade here on tonight in the mid lane, but just going to utilize his shield for a bit of extra damage and then uh, back on away. We'll have to see. Can Kanavi actually cross through mid and got double scuttled? Because that would be a way to kind of bail himself out of the situation, but it doesn't look like it with T1 having bot Pryo, it should be... T1 grabbing the bot side scuttle. Yeah, especially uh, with Ona now being again, able to man. move around. So Kanavi going to move in there as now Faker could be in trouble. He's going to flash, gets the E off to make sure that they are slowed. And the present going to be delivered over to Knight. He says no, but it is still going to be Ona with control of this scuttle. Big win for a Knight specifically. Uh, no flash on Faker means that he is both a lot safer. Gives him the opportunity to play around, but it does not solve the issue she pointed out of Kanavi being pretty far behind when it comes to jungle farm. Owner now also going to start his second clear here. And going to be pretty substantially ahead as Kanavi still has, his, uh, has had his red buff and his crooks up this whole time. Yeah. Good bit of pressure here from T1 towards the bottom side. But Azale, that's what you've been talking about this whole time. Very difficult for a Rakan and a Jinx to get control against the Lulu Aphelios that has been dominant uh, so far this MSI. Yeah, absolutely, but on the top side, you know, 369 doing a really good job in this matchup again. You know, this is not silent. You don't just get a free lane against Comet Gragas. It is really difficult to actually lane against in those early levels. Once Zayas gets you know, towards the Riftmaker, gets his Leeching Leer, starts getting some more sustain, it becomes a lot more easy uh, to actually deal with this. But in the early levels, 369 is, is really going to be able to create a pretty good advantage. Yep. They watched Carrier back there, so there was maybe a minute opportunity here. But you can see JDG not going to go overly aggressive, and Kibushi's going to wander his way out. Has once again uh, taken the Ghost on the Aphelios, trying to get a bit of extra movement around. And Faker organizing his minions, utilizing his depth charge. Pretty cute there to make sure that he can keep the wave over his side of the Rift. Well, neither Carrier is going to have to go towards Mikhail's, or they're just going to have to be incredibly careful with their positioning because it says one all connects onto Guma. No cleanse for that. You know, stolen Maokai ult can also be problematic. Of course, there are ways to deal with it. There are frontliners to actually block it for him, but uh, if they're able, able to get into that backline, it's going to be a problem. As we see now, T1 hasn't really been able to make use of the early lead that we did find on owner. He does have an experience lead, but it's very minute, right? Like maybe a camp. Don't think that 
with the pace of how these games have been going, that is really going to be the main difference maker. And that means that as we move towards that inevitable Herald fight, because Dragons, I think, have been pretty low stakes, at least the first one, often given up. And it's also just a Camtech Drake. I'll let that one go. Right on the edge of the cast there, as you can see, Zayas now dealing with a bunch of minions and 369, losing out on that trade as Faker engaged upon once again. Permafrost is fantastic, and Knight steals away an ult he doesn't even need to use for first blood. Nicely done. Kanavi has been spending so much time around mid lane trying to get Knight into a good spot. They know they had forced out that flash earlier, so they go right back to it. They don't even have to commit the stolen Nautilus ult. You can see Knight is actually moving down on the minimap, and look where Kanavi is. They're gonna double blast going over and try to use the stolen Nautilus ult to threaten a dive, but Faker is wise to it. He's running straight out towards bot, is gonna bail out as they now see them warded on the dragon, but a nice look and a nice response from T1. Actually see the immediate pivot from JDG as well. Use the blast cone to just get on top of dragon. We'll be able to pick that up, and Kanavi, actually getting the payoff for the earlier summoner that he blown as... Yeah, Faker still has his death charge available, but no flash, cannot get over that wall. So it's just gonna be a Drake taken here by JDG. T1 just defensive posturing, we'll be able to deal with this minion wave now. And right now, JDG able to get the early lead kill going over tonight, particularly on picks like the Silas that love to play extremely far forward, get the most value when you're aggressive, when you're able to skirmish, when you're in the thick of things. Snowballing the early laning phase. Extremely, extremely powerful. Do see the top lane matchup slowly starting to equalize. Uh, and as expected, uh, I think once Zeus does get to the Rift Maker, it, it really evens out. Free Second Nine should still be able, though, to dictate the pace of the lane, half prior whenever he feels like it. That might mean that JDG, when we get to this Herald setup, could have an advantage. Absolutely. And T1 is going to have really good Merc Shreds value on the top side. Oh, yeah. You know, it's, it's Gragas, it's Silas, and it's Sedwani, right? So you can see Merc Shreds already completed by Faker. Zayas is going to be going towards that as well. And T1 already on to this Herald. Looks like it will not be contested. Ruler still staying down towards bot. So T1 should just be able to trade this back for that early dragon that was grabbed by JDG. Yep, just a gentleman's agreement when it comes to these neutral objectives so far. And as we can see on the top of your screen, about 600 gold going to be the lead for the LPL representative. JDG just giving this one up, and it should mean that T1 can also just get us to complete parity mm -hmm. when it comes to the gold. And we've basically only seen two games. One is it goes even, T1 wins one team fight and it's over, or JDG gets an early lead like they have now, and keep accelerating, accelerating, and making that lead larger and completely choking T1 out of the game. And I think the first fights, as Kanavi is here towards the top side, are going to be the big difference maker here. Interesting thing is, is it feels like it's JDG that are playing the game for these Baron timings and utilizing yeah. the Baron to win the game, which used to be the T1 game plan, but T1 just haven't really been worried about it. They're gonna win, they're going to win a team fight and then take a Nexus instead of a Baron. And I think it's just because they won those team fights so so dominantly, right? You know, it wasn't like it was a close fight and they have to limp their way over to Baron. Uh, they are just getting five for zeros yeah. out of seemingly nowhere, and then they can just end the game. They can look for that more aggressive play. And uh, D1 is definitely not a team that is afraid of risk. You know, we saw in that first game where they got the team fight win, they go towards the Nexus. That was really close. Zoner's flashing the wall. They want this. Yeah, Nature's Grasp going to come through. The flash has already come down, and in he goes with the twisted advance. Nowhere for 369 to go on this one, and Zay is going to grab the first kill for D1. Really big moment here. This Gwen was one of the pain points with 369 doing a great job in the early laning phase, keeping him on the back foot and making sure that Zeus has an impact on this Gwen can make or break team fights down the line. Well, Kanavi just fighting Faker here, does find himself a permafrost proc, and uh, Faker just looking a little bit miffed by the whole situation. There is the Rift Herald down towards his top side though, as Knight comes on in to try and deny, but it's not going to work out. And it is going to be money in the back pockets of T1. Yeah, nicely done by T1. It's just a great ulti angle there as Knight. Battling very confidently against those two. You know, yeah. owner, owner had just a great Maokai all angle where there was not really any escaping that from 369. It was never really going to be able to get out. So, really well done. They moved Knight up towards topside though to hold that wave. They actually had Kanavi soaking the mid farm on the previous wave. Then they'll send 369 out to collect this one. They can push out top and then they can actually just swap back and continue in their normal lane assignments. So, nice map movement here from JDG to kind of bounce back after a really good T1 play. Yep, just trying to maximize what they can collect. Ruler and Missing do manage to get a crash towards this bottom side, but that plate is going to elude them for the moment. 
speaking of plates, one going to go over to 369 as Zaius makes his way back up. Leeching Leah in his back pocket, and the most important item, the uh, Merc Treads, are going to be there as well. Was he just sitting on that pick ward the whole time, or did that actually just get placed as he came up? It looked like he was. I didn't know the just range was that high. On. Yeah, I think he was just sitting on the pick ward. It was there the whole time, so just elected not to, to actually clean it up. Wanted to go for that play. Does get greeted, so he's going to lose some tempo. Uh, it is 369 as expected, moving up towards top, but potentially, you know, T1 could maybe deny a couple minions off that mid. Not going to happen, though, as Knight will just now use his TP. Yep, Teleport comes back. Rule it does manage to pick up that plate that was on offer. Only a few more minutes before those plates are going to go down as Ona with the ultimate back available once again, lurking in this mid lane. They've got a lot of CC, but not a lot of damage with this duo. But if Missing's going to face check, could be dangerous. But no, he does have the grand exit. Going to get himself out. No really big leads. We do have 369 with an Everfrost. On the flip side, Ona does have Demonic Embrace done, but no Mythics for the mid laners, right? Uh, Gumayushi not able to finish his item yet, even though, although Ruler actually on this back, able to get the Kraken Slayer. That is a big spike. And Roa just got completed by Knight as well. So, you know, he also bought a stopwatch, right? So that is actually pretty big. You know, he clearly wants to be ready to fight, grabbing that early stopwatch here. They want to go for this 5v5 at this dragon that has now spawned. T1 are obviously first to the area, uh, but Knight will be pushing out through mid. Does have the stopwatch available. We'll see if he can find a good stolen alt. Yeah, double teleports available for these top laners as well. We'll see when they're going to come and join this fight, or if they do. Ocean Drake being started by JDG, down to 50% health as Knight off to the side, spotted by the sapling, and it looks like T1, they want none of it. They've lost control of the area, and they will just give it up. But it's 369 the TP down, Zayas did not, so he's actually going to be able to get a plate top. There's no TP to answer top, so he's going to be able to get a plate, potentially? No, instead he's just going to actually base, but it will be at least some of these minions denied. Going to be losing about, I don't know, three melees, maybe. Uh, so not the biggest of deals, but at least they do have Pryo now to play through sides with Zayas. Yeah, I think we have JDG, you're also not too, too unhappy no, about it, right? You get all. the uh, 369 in particular um, has been up in CS, so even with the kill, the goal is very close to even, about a 200 difference, so not going to be a big issue there. And I do think if you have Riftmaker, might expect Zeus to play a little bit further forward there, but at this point, not going to win that 1v1 against 369 just yet, and if you're too far up the lane, might just get blown up as... Do see, when we look at the bottom half of the map, uh, even though Gumi Yushi is up, went for his uh, his Berserker Greaves, and as a result, is behind on the Mythic time. Yeah, I do think Ruler and Missing have done a pretty good job to get through this lane, you know, as, as relatively unscathed as yeah. they have. They did lose one plate, but it was traded back for another on the other side. You know, Ruler is going to be quite relevant in these fights. Uh, the main advantage does kind of feel like it is around mid right now. Uh, where Knight has had more pressure, he's had been getting that jungle assistance from Kanavi. They've been really trying to attack Faker, uh, who hasn't been as impressive on the Nautilus, it feels like, as some of the other picks in the series. Yeah, not so much. He hasn't been the main character when uh, playing this particular champion, but at least to go back to some previous points, they have both Zeus and Gumushi. That's what you're going to be looking at on the T1 side. However, it's going to be all about Ruler and Knight this time. Kanavi as well sort of gave up his carry boots that he was wearing in the last game. And so it's him and Faker that are taking a backseat moving into this one. Yeah, and Knight is almost 1k gold up, right? So he is going to ha have to make a really big impact here. Gumushi pretty oh. far up. He manages to dodge a couple of abilities, but that is a key flash now on cooldown for T1. Yeah, and remember, he had no cleanse, so he had no choice but to flash there. They committed the heal and the ghost remove speed. Saw it wasn't going to be enough. Had to use flash also. And now, JDG in a great spot potentially to look for this fight. Remember, Missing has Flash and ulti, and 369 is flanking here with his Flash, so a tough one to enter for Guma. Yeah, you can see Zayas trying to mark this Gragas, his potential location in this fight. Faker is going to go in. That is going to be Knight stunned up for the moment. Missing could be in trouble. Nature's Grasp not going to find too much value, and now the re-engage is going to come forward. It's a huge knockback on a Gumi. She stays alive for so long. Not sure how that happened, but now it's Ruler that just free hitting. Zayas is massive in this fight. That's true. Faker somehow manages to curve the anchor. And it's a double kill now for Zayas. But oh! the re engage is gigantic. And with Ruler and his auto attacks, it's JDG that win the fight. Oh, JDG taking over as Ruler gets a triple kill, kiting back from Zayas. As soon as that shroud expired, as soon as he was no longer immune, everyone from JDG piles in on him. And Ruler just headshots him with the ulti, gets the reset, and they pile through. They'll take the objective as well. And again, 369 is giving T1 flashbacks to what happened to them in their spring finals because those Gragas flanks are 
insane, right? Completely splits up the fight. Guma is staying alive somehow for a lot longer than expected, but it doesn't matter because he doesn't actually get to do damage. There are so many flashbacks, actually, Chronicler, because there was an LCK final in summer of last year, and Ruler did a lot of these things in that one as well as we check it out again. I think he was spotted by this ward, though, but they're not actually reacting to it. Now they try to peel back, but there's the Body Slam Flash, oh, the stolen crazy. Nautilus ulti is through as well. Everyone gets in on top of it. As you say, living quite a while there, it must have been a red gun ulti there, potentially, from Guma trying to heal him up, keep him alive. This hook from Faker makes you think maybe something can happen, but Ruler's just kiting it back, and the ulti for the double kill comes through. How did Ruler Kanavi and 369 so well. coordinate those abilities so well in the middle of the team fight? Oh, he's pumped. Ruler and... <laughs> Because of the placement of the wards, 369 was actually never spotted. Oh, he actually moved just around, out of range. Was never at any point, and I think by the time you saw Carrier move over, T1 seemed to have an inkling that something was wrong, but it was too late. And then that combo between 369 and Knight with the stolen ultimate, beautifully done. And now they're in a great position for this up and Drake fight. You have to say, though, it was very brazen from T1 to be trying to fight this with no sums on Gumayushi. You know that they have these tools to get in on him. It looked a lot closer, honestly, than I thought it was going to once they had that initial engage. But Guma with no sums, it's so hard to survive against all of the engage tools that JDG have. And now <laughs> Ruler is really ahead of the curve. You know, we're going to look down towards the bot lane. It is a 1,300 gold lead it down in even. bot. It is an over 1,000 gold lead in mid. JDG just always get their carries fed, it feels like. No, it's ridiculous. Their money in exactly the places that they need it as well. Knight and Ruler are so imperative to what JDG want to do as this game goes on. 18 minutes into this one, a couple of minutes away from the first Baron spawn. As T1 moving down towards this bottom side, but they have to deal with Shirley marching up this mid lane. Kamushi standing forward. I don't know whether this one's going to get a charge. The hook is going to go wide. Yeah. Already see the teleport coming through here. Knight on a flank angle. They want to try to potentially dive in, but the Herald can't even get the charge. There's no one there to actually walk it in. So great job by T1 denying that. Because yeah, you called it out. Knight was on that TP. If they can actually crack the turret, they could go over. Instead, it is JDG actually just starting up this dragon here, and Ruler has all his sums. Didn't have to use his flash on the last fight. TP. Vision going to be available here as T1 look to move in. There's the hook. It's going to connect. They look to just take one out of the fight immediately. Moonlight Vigil is going to do that as Ruler standing in relative safety for now, but they're not getting too much back. It's a fantastic ulti from 369, but can they actually get anything? Another hook He's going to come through, but 369 gets himself out. Faker in a bunch of trouble. Oh. Isaiah's trying to help him, and Ruler so is going to get excited. They managed to take down the Drake, and Ona, can you get over the wall? He doesn't have his flash available for now, and I think he's just dead. T1 going to have to give them the tree as they get themselves out. And I don't think you take that trade if you're T1. I don't think you're happy with that. More gold going on to Ruler. He didn't even have to blow his sums in that fight. And you see, Zeus at this point just doesn't do enough damage with the needles. And as a result, the front line from JDG stays alive for too long. I mean, JDG are just playing around it so well. Zeus, as you say, is not doing enough damage during his shroud. He has that immunity, but he's not able to actually really get it done during it. The initial start of the fight was looking really good for T1. They get this missing pick onto the Rakan. They're able to burst him down. It's a great ulti from Kanavi sneaking through onto Guma to delay some of the damage. But as they kite back, oh. the ulti from 369 splits them all up. It allows Ruler some space to move forward. He's just spacing so incredibly well with the lethal tempo fully stacked. He's pulling back here, and Faker gets tagged by the zap. And what was it that even finished him off? Was it a corrupting ball? I don't even know what it was. Not sure, just Might some damage from Red Buff, Red Buff, yeah. And, and most importantly, like this type of ebb and flow, we've seen how good JDG is at, at kind of managing the pace of these team fights. What I want to highlight as well is that even though they ended up taking down Missing, which is a big win, it was, I think, three ultimates. Owner throughout his, same for Faker, same for Guma, and in particular that last one, I think they were really missing at the end. Yeah, and uh, get yourself a top laner that protects you like 369. Watching him walk yeah. in front of that hook that Faker threw out that was aimed perfectly for Ruler, that's a game decider on a, on a hook like that. But he was there, managed to get a body slammed out, and JDG walk away the victors. Absolutely amazing play. 
Uh, Zayas looking for missing here, who does have a lot of uh, mobility, so he'll be fine. Does get polymorphed, but gets the grand exit out beforehand. I'm just so impressed by how 369 plays out these fights, right? When there is an angle, he's going to look for the body slam flash onto the back line. When there isn't, he's always going to use this ulti to disrupt the fight, to peel back. He doesn't have to always try to hard force onto Guma. He's always finding something that is very, very effective. He knows when to peel, he knows when to dive. And I think that is the hallmark really of JDG, is their 5v5 and how well they play around Ruler and how well he is spacing that we've gone through some of these really tense fights and back-to-back -back team fights. He didn't even need to use his flash. And now he's bearing down on this outer turret in the mid lane. Looks like Gumiushi's gonna have enough friends in order to take this one down. The rapid fire onto it. is also now completed, right? So the range advantage becomes that much larger now for Ruler. Yep, Ruler's favorite item in the game. Just loves building it, no matter what anyone tells him ever. He will always build that item. The added poke is so valuable for a lot of these players to maximize the damage. It's now Kanavi just bearing down onto Ona. Permafrost is going to stun him up as the hook is going to land there from Faker. They're not hard committing onto this little skirmish off to the side as Gumiushi sidesteps the zap. Yeah, and they did get the, the dash there with the Gale Force off of Guma. The Everfrost was coming through from 369. And T1 has got to answer top. Nidus has been pushing it in again. It is JDG playing more heavily to the sides. Despite the fact that it is Zayas here on the Gwen. Oh. They are the ones threatening. They're looking for it as owner. He's so incredibly low. Nature's Grasp now picked up by Knight, but they're not going to invest it on the low health Maokai. Kerry goes back. Shirelli is now picked up, and they will be able to claim this outer turret in the mid lane. Full information on the reset. Yeah, it would have been a disaster for T1. They were off of the back of three item finishes, right? Um, actually being just shy of the Shirelias, the Infinity Edge, and the Nashor's Tooth. So, nice opportunity. And JDG, even without the fight, they're able to get themselves the mid lane turret start, choking out T1 again, which is very much how they won the two games that they've won thus far in the series, right? It's these type of leads just being drawn out further and further. I mean, I just think there's so much pressure on Zayas to really be oh, yeah. the X Factor. Because Ruler is so far ahead as far as that bot lane matchup goes. Again, Faker is way behind. He's a full item completion behind. You know, it has to be Zayas really making things happen. He has gone towards the Nashers, which a lot of people really do look at as more of kind of that side lane item. Yep. But if you can get in onto Ruler, if you can find that connection onto the back line, he's going to be massive. And that's really what he has to look for. He has to find a way to get past all of the bodyguards that JDG have. And that's the main issue, right? Between Kanavi and 369, it seems like Ruler, even though he doesn't really have anything like a Kench, a Fresh, is still untouchable in every single fight. And it's this issue that T1 have to solve if they want to find their way to another final. But right now, it looks like JDG has just been able to deny any engage, any flank. Ruler is just never, ever touched. Yep. The best way to peel is to permanently CC every one of your opponents. Uh, and that is the JDG strategy uh, for <laughs> this one. And so far, it has worked out, especially in the previous game. And now with all of that extra range, Ruler on so much comfort with this Jinx. Been watching him play it for years now, and he has always been that insurance policy. Well, are T1 just going to start this up? Five yeah, members top, yeah. Sure. T1 Baron, uh -huh. this is the signature. All right. They're going to be moving up, clearing out the vision. Will they actually start it? They want to at least draw JDG in. See if they can find some sort of a turn, but yep, here we go. 23 minutes in, Baron started. Yep, T1 back to their natural habitat. Let's see whether it is going to be nice to them this time around as Knight standing on a ward. They know exactly where everyone is as Kanavi. He can get into this pit at any time. It's a 50-50 pretty truly as T1 are now looking to try and find the turn. The hook is going to connect onto the jungler as now missing with the quickness, Zayas. but he's just going to die. Zayas diving Ooh. into that back line. Missing's going to go down, and Kumiyushi is just gigantic. He goes golden. Another team fight, the T1 win at 24 and a half minutes. Why does this keep happening? T1 are just pushing through. They're gonna have to go back to the Baron. They can't get Kanavi. Will they take the Dragon? Will they take the Baron? They're pinging onto both. It looks like they want to take it all here as Guma cleans up. And that time, Zayas got into the back line, crushes through Ruler. Guma flashed over the wall just to ensure that the damage backup was there from Zayas. And T1 Baron, it wasn't not about the Baron, it was just about finding the one angle that allowed him to fight JDG. There was one player that they needed in order to get them over the line, and it was Baron. Absolutely. Ruler had just finished his IE prior to this fight, so I thought it was going to go his way. But the ulti from Nautilus, the follow-up from Zayas, right back in onto Ruler. And Ruler unable to get back. He flashes back, but it creates no space. He doesn't get over the wall. And in comes Guma, as you called out. T1 know their win condition. Get in onto Ruler. They found the pick. 
But look at look at the pit back in live. It's JDG who are onto the dragon here. They're gonna move to Soul Point. They will be able to pick that one up. T1 with their Baron. We'll see whether they can get some map control and deny that one, but that is gonna be in five minutes time. The Rebel Baron power play moving up towards that 2k mark, but it is barely an advantage. We still have a game on our hands, and I wanted to pan over to the Nexus to see the beads of sweat, you know, as the <laughs> team fight happens. But JDG's Nexus gets to breathe a sigh of relief after that one. I mean, we were all thinking, it. Oh, as, yeah. as soon as T1 starts winning that fight, you're like, is it going to happen again? All three games. It does not, as Kanavi is able to buy a lot of time, get away. Uh, JDG are on sole point here, but everyone is missing summoners now. So the engage has become that much more important. And, and what we're seeing now, if you look at the gold, Guma actually even again with Ruler. Yeah. We've, been, we've been going back and forth on this, but the really big thing is Zeus actually able to pick up what is now an almost 3,000 gold lead here over his point where we can see the amount of gold on this Gwen, once that death cap is finished, Ruler is going to have even less opportunity to play the game because even, I think, a single set of needles will chunk him out. Absolutely. And at that point, you're going to be needing to work towards something like a BT to help you to deal with that. Um, and he's going to have the death cap right now. So Zeus is absolutely massive. Knight is trying to work towards it, but Knight is a couple thousand gold behind where Zeus is. Zeus has also hit 16, by the way. So level three ultimate, death cap completed. If he gets into the back line, I agree with you, Chrono Flare. Ruler is toast. And I think it's it's actually so fun to watch, though, because when the game has the, these two hyper carries that are so evenly matched, you have to look to the next rung. And in this game, it's Zeus that is stepping up. But Knight, he's on the Silas. And you can always find angles. You can always find windows if you have the access to about 1,500 different ultimates within a team fight, and he is so close to level 16. Absolutely, and if he can get that 16, if he can get his death cap as well, uh, things can really start to get more difficult. Look at 369, though, he is threatening over the wall here. I think they're just gonna give up the tier one. It is a big bear in power play here from T1, the 3,500 gold that That's they have Blue swung Trinket. in their favor. Blue Trinket paying for itself there, spotting out 369 off on the flank as T1 move through the enemy jungle. Look to try and grab this inner turret here on this bottom side. 3.5 thousand gold. It's going to be that Rebel Baron power play here for T1 as they just zone them away, utilize the nature's grasp, and now look for a reset. And there you see the value, right? Zayas with this death cap finished with the lead he has, and Amashras is going to chew through a turret in a manner of seconds. And yeah, thank you very much for pointing out that one, Azil, because you don't have a choice as ruler, right? I don't even think that something like a BT, which is really good in this poke, is gonna help you if Zeus ever actually gets on top of you. And on the flip side, because of that fight and how it played out, Gumayushi does have access to a BT right now, so it's gonna be so much harder to take down in a split second to something that JDG have been doing, to, uh, have been able to do for this entire series so well. Knight, though, has about 2k in pocket, so he's only a couple hundred gold away from completing his death cap here. Ooh. They really want to get him that death cap before they fight. It is such a massive spike. But T1 are really pushing the pace now. You know, they got this lead. They have been heavily, heavily forcing here. Ooh. 369 in trouble. So much trouble as there's the death charge. You got Polymorph not able to get himself out of the way. It's going to be an inner turret alongside a Gragas. T1 grabbed that one. Knight is teleported in, though. Gets a massive amount of knockups as the Glacial Prison comes down. Owner is just buying so much space, though. <laughs> what is that blast cone? Knocks everyone around. And Ruler is going to be taken out. Faker Ruler. finds the hook. Ruler is now able to free him, though. Oh, that's two autos on Naguma. And he's just out of there. It's a one for one in the end, guys. Nothing to worry about. No that biggie. was so dicey. Ruler got a couple autos on Naguma there, and you really saw how quickly that fight could turn. But that was was scary for JDG. 369 dying and Knight arrives with the DB. I thought he was gonna arrive just to die and we could have seen JDG series end right there, but they're able to fight back, they're able to survive. Yeah, really big here, 369 stay, uh, even though he gets taken down very quickly, able to buy space, right? With his ultimate, uh, which gives Knight Dying Door as you mentioned, I thought that this was gonna be a problem, but again, look at the position of Ruler here. He is completely unmatched. No one is on him except Owner, and without the damage prerequisite, he gets to get off so much, and the moment that Blast Stone comes through, you think Kanavi's dead, but thanks to the help of his team, actually able to stay alive. And then these rockets, Ruler stepping oh. forward, getting a couple oh. autos there. That's three autos on Naguma. Almost was able to knock him down. Death Cap now complete for Knight. He has obviously passed 16. He's already up to level 17. We are at soul point here at JDG are moving towards it, but it's T1 who are gonna be playing through mid, and JDG cannot ignore mid lane completely. 
Or T1 could just go for the inhib. This is going to get a little bit weird as T1 are not being responded to, so you could just send Zayus. Yeah, they have so much vision available here as well. You can see this oh, triangle flanks. of control wards as 369 is going to get spotted on that flank. T1 here at the Dragon should be a 50-50, but missing. He's going to walk over that control ward. They know exactly where he is. Gets himself past. Soul is going to be denied here. But now Owner is in trouble. Down to 50% health. They dive on top of the Rakan. He's now trying to play safe, but it's Owner that falls down. Zayus gets into the back line, though, as Kanabi is out of this fight. Knight has to go golden. And now it's just protect the ruler for JDG. They get themselves out, but they don't get the Drake. It's Drake. For tree. Yeah, only owner goes down though, and with owner down, JDG might try to get a reset in and hard run towards this Baron. Oh, he wanted to start it without a juggler. T1 are starting it. What? Okay, well now full information is there as well because they get the blue trinket down. Okay, okay, calm down. All right, I'm gonna have a sip of water, guys. Um, <laughs> can we just ask the teams to chill out for a moment? Oh just my a little God. bit. T T1 are just staying in the area because they, they know that this could be a start here from JDG. T1 have four members here, owners respawning in five. Well, Hook is going to land here as Faker just says, we're going in. Moonlight Vigil is kind of massive, but Ruler's gonna take down Faker. Zayus is huge, but he's dead! And it's a double kill for the Jinx. And T1 why? just give them a Baron. Why did T1 take that fight? It's a 4v5, you have full information. Faker hooks in, gives over two free kills. JDG take the Baron, and in the critical game five, they take control. The overconfidence from T1 to say, yeah, no biggie, we don't have a jungler who'll start up Baron. At least they recognize, hey, maybe that's not the best idea. But then to hard engage a four versus five. Just why? I have no idea. They no see them all. Clue. And and all the damage here goes into Kanavi, right? Yes, missing uh, is able to get Goom out of the fight. And as a result, that just isn't enough damage. They didn't even have the Gwen needles. Yeah, not even Gwen ulti available there. Faker knows he made a misstep. And it could be one that costs them the series. We'll see if T1 can battle back. It is soul point. The gold very even though. So T1, despite the misstep, absolutely can win this game. It's going to come down to the execution in the 5v5 as it feels like it has every single game. My goodness, the intensity of this game is just absurd. The last game five we saw, it was over in 24 minutes in the blink of an eye, and this one, it is just neck and neck the entire time. JDG with a massive lead, though, in the fact that they have the Baron. The map control is going to be there, and they have the ability to get towards this Drake, but you go back to that Drake fight, and the fact that Ona was able to take it is so huge for buying that extra yeah. bit of time, because otherwise, JDG could be looking at Baron push into Elder to get all of that control. Absolutely, and Guma now missing his flash, so it's so critical that he completed the GA. He needs to have that available. You look over on the other side, some of the luxury items coming through. The Maw is now done for Ruler. He has the stopwatch as well, and he, again, just never seems to need his summoners. It's insane how many tense fight Ruler gets through and still having that flash available. So JDG trying to take all these tier twos off the map, trying to extend uh, themselves into an advantage here. Five turrets apiece. Gentlemen, it is 60,000 gold, 500, versus 60,000 gold, 900. There is Woo. nothing in it between these two squads. It's going to come down to team fight execution both times. Who has the vision in the right areas? Oh. Who is spotting the flanks? And right now, it when? is T1 trying to get into position. Zayas could be the difference maker, but JDG I could just know. run down the front door. Okay, Zayas, can you make it happen? He's biding his time, as now Ruler has to deal with him. Ona gets into the back line, but Ruler flashes. Oh my god, he gets excited, and Gwen is not immune today. It's a double kill for Ruler, and I don't know what the option is going to be here for T1. They're going to TP back in. They're basing. They're going to use double TPs here. JDG are pushing for the win here. At 35 minutes, I think they may have done it off the back. Just keeping cool. He held the flash after the last team fight, and now they're gonna break down the Nexus turrets. And JDG will be waiting to see whether they get a rematch in the final of MSI 2023. And as T1 falls to the lower bracket, JDG guarantees themselves the highest finish. They will be waiting in that grand final. What a series between these two teams, and what a final game from Ruler. 12, 1, and 3 on the Jinx.
some League of Legends played at the absolute highest level between these two teams, going back and forth time and time again throughout this series. But T1 have got to be regretting that engage by the Baron in this yeah. final game. It was that one mistake that JDG needed, and JDG were able to make the absolute most of it. Their team fighting is just incredible. And then they had to do it again. They had to pick that flank from Zayus, and Rula flashing into exactly the right position, gets that pick off, and his jinx, the way he navigates these fights, just extraordinary. JDG, five incredible games. Honestly, both of these teams playing incredibly well. I mean, the two that T1 managed to win, it felt like that was over so incredibly yeah. quickly, but the amount that you need in order to guarantee those moments is absolutely huge. We can't take anything away from them, but honestly, it felt like